Adam Jones on YouTube asked for a tour of the NovaCut Python code, and so here it is. Now I'm going to walk you through what's in my GStreamer 1.0 branch, and to do that we'll need to enter the GStreamer uninstalled environment, because there aren't um, gnonlin packages for 1.0 yet. So do that to enter the uninstalled environment, and if you do a print env, you can see you're in the uninstalled environment because you have these rather crazy looking environment variables. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and enter my gstreamer 1.0 branch of NovaCut. So the first thing I would do is run the unit test. So we've adopted the um, setup py test convention that Barry Warsaw is advocating, and it's awesome. You should use it also. And the reason I recommend running the test immediately is it's just a good way to make sure your development environment is set up appropriately. Um, I've covered this in other tutorials, but I also recommend installing NovaCut from the daily PPA because that's an easy way to get all the dependencies you need. Um, so, ran the unit test. Um, the NovaCut directory in here, this is the NovaCut Python package. And then you'll see in the root of the tree, you'll, there's a bunch of um, scripts. So there's NovaCut CLI, NovaCut GTK, NovaCut Renderer, NovaCut Service, NovaCut Thumbnailer. And these are all laid out so that they can import the NovaCut Python package when run from the source tree. Um, and this is pretty standard layout for, for at least pure Python uh, modules uh, or packages. Um, one thing that's a bit of a pain is NovaCut does have a dbus service, which you can launch from the source tree dot slash NovaCut dash service. Um, and when you're developing, if you need to be definitely running the dbus service from the source tree, so you're working on the renderer, um, it's helpful to know how to figure out which one is running because uh, it can easily start oops, the um, installed NovaCut version rather than what's in your source tree. So, touch of a pain, we still want to make something nicer for that, but the log file for the dbus service is in .cache slash NovaCut, NovaCut-service.log, and you'll see the log tells you um, the absolute path of the script and the um, NovaCut Python package, that's what this underscore file is. So you can see that this is in fact running from the source tree. So, just a uh, handy little thing to know how to do. Um, so I'll go ahead and kill that. NovaCut CLI is similar to the Demedia CLI. Oops. And basically it's, it's a way to call commands on the dbus service. Um, also can be kind of a handy reference for what those commands are. The NovaCut dbus service is probably gonna go away fairly soon. Um, because we're working on moving all these things to an HTTP API. So the debug service was kind of a quick way to get certain things working, but you know we're building things in a way that the UI is network net network transparent, which the debug service is a place where that's not the case um, entirely right now. So just bear in mind that's going to change. But um, NovaCut GTK is oops, the script that launches the UI. Um, there's not a lot in here because most of this functionality comes from user WebKit, which is something you'll want to look at. Um, user WebKit is a foundational library that both DMedia and NovaCut use, and it basically tries to capture the pattern of um, you know c connecting this this WebKit GT, this WebKit web view to talking to the, the local CouchDB. Um, so it takes care of, uh, you know, automatically adding in the, the authorization information needed or can do OAuth. And so some of the complexities there are captured in user WebKit. Um, NovaCut renderer is the render script. So this gets launched in its own process whenever you're doing a render to a file. And this is launched by the dbus service. So 
uh, you can actually have a render in progress when the UI is closed. Um, let's see. Another cut thumbnail creates the, the per frame thumbnails that the storyboard view uses. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty good tour of that. Now, as far as looking in the Python package, which is where the bulk of the code is, um, the first thing I would start with is looking at the schema.py. For anyone familiar with the dmedia code, this is you know basically the same as the schema.py in dmedia, and uh, there's pretty good doc strings here that should hopefully get you up to speed quickly. Um, and we use the um, the dmedia schema definition helpers. So all these underscore things here. Um, the biggest goal with this file is to really clearly define the schema and to give really clear error messages when the schema doesn't conform. So, you know, that, that is built to use this as kind of a, um, a conformance test, basically, because we'd like to see other applications start using um, a schema similar to what Novakit's using. So, you'll see all these check functions, like check Novacut, and this makes sure that the common schema, um, that there's certain common schema that all the Novacut documents should have, and it's just two attributes, so they all should have a type, like this here, and it should start with Novacut slash whatever. And then the time is the time that the document was created. So this is not necessarily the time that it was saved to CatchDB. I mean, there could be some delay there for various reasons, but the time that the document was created. You'll see check node. Um, so documents with the type novacut slash node define the edit state. There are some other type of documents that um, basically store UI state that doesn't affect the, the resulting render. Um, but it's still handy. So, and, and anything that um, affects the edit state is always going to have this node subdictionary like this. And the reason we put it into its own kind of well-defined um, sub piece is that we hash that as a way to uh, basically give a, a you know global unique ID to an exact um, edit state. And we use that, for example, to figure out if there's a, a pre-render available. Um, right now, we're just doing this at the top level, but eventually, you know, node by node, any of those could be pre-rendered. And this is especially going to be useful for things that are too computationally intensive to do in real time. So we pre-render it, um, and then we just play this pre-rendered instead of you know having to do the computation in real time. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? <clears throat> and then you also see that there's a bunch of these like check foo functions and then create foo. So this creates a, a node document and then you pass it the, the node sub dictionary and then it fills in the needed pieces. So type novacut slash node, timestamp, and the node. Um, Check video sequence is getting a little more interesting. So again, you see what the node looks like internally. And you also see that these check functions are kind of layered. So this calls check node and check node um, calls check Novacut. So again, this is just the, the goal of this is very clearly defining the schema. Um, Check relative audio. You'll notice that uh, I'll show you an example in a second what that looks like. But so the audio actually isn't hashed um, directly because we want to be able to separate the hashing state of the video and the audio. Um, mostly because you know the, the video the, is the thing that's very computationally intensive, where we want to be doing a lot of pre-computing and even uh, pre-rendering. So, and then there's the create video sequence um, function. So yeah, the, this all has 
pretty good dock strings, so I would just read through them and to get a feel for it. If you look in the tests, you'll see that there's test schema. So for, for each Python module, we have a corresponding test module. And then for each function, there's a corresponding test method. And I'll give you a quick example of what... Um, okay, here's, here's a good example here. So we tried to deliver very clear um, uh, error messages if the schema doesn't conform. So the start of the error message is always basically a, a, a path to the thing in the document. So um, if it's a, a string key, that means you know it's you're inside a dictionary. If it's an integer key, it means you're inside of a list. So this means we're looking at the the audio um, attribute in the document and the second element in that list. And then in this case, it was a type error, which says you know says we were expecting a dictionary, we got an integer, and then what the value was. So. Um, when someone's trying to make their schema conformant, you know, we want to have just, again, very, very clear error messages to help them through that process quickly. Uh, something else I would look at is, or immediately, is this timefunks module. And this is, is new in the GSM 1.0 branch, because I wanted to, to separate this out and get, the, get really clear and easy to understand. So GStreamer deals internally with um, nanoseconds for all its timestamps. This actually might change in, say, GStreamer 2.0, whatever they call it, the next major version where they um, uh, allow themselves an API compatibility break. But the Novica edit description is in terms of frames and samples, and there's a few reasons we did that. Um, one of the most important is that the, the the edit schema is basically the API that UI deals with. So we described the, the Novica edits as a graph. Um, there's a couple of sample documents up here. And each, each node in the graph has a document. And the UI directly updates this edit description. So you almost can think of it like the UI directly updates the, 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 the file format almost. It's, to me, that's a clear way to think about it. Um, and so because of that, you know, we put a lot of effort into making the schema very simple and very easy for the UI to deal with. So because you know, frame accuracy is, is so important, um, it's nice for the UI to know, like, OK, if, if we want to go to the next frame, we just add one to the current frame we're at, or subtract one, or however you want to do that. Um, and these, these slices use the same semantics as uh, Python slices. So imagine <clears throat> if you had like a, a Python um, list, this is you know, the exact same kind of um, uh, array semantics. So easy to deal with. Um, let's see. We also sometimes need to go from for. So this frame nanosecond and the nanosecond to frame are inverse functions that um, you know, we, we can go from, say, a buffer presentation timestamp, PTS, that was what was called the buffer dot um, timestamp in GStream 010, but we can go from the PTS and figure out what frame it is. Um, yeah. And then this renderer, um, some of this is still in the process of being a bit reorganized, but this is what goes from the edit description to actually building the GStreamer graph. Um, so it, it'll build the appropriately configured um, GNOMLIN, uh, or sorry, GNOMLIN composition and GNOMLIN URI source elements. Um, and you know, as people know, like our Right now, we're very focused on the storyboard view and making that work as well as possible. So we don't do anything especially complicated yet, but one of the reasons we use a graph to describe the edit, um, we took a lot of inspiration from GStreamer in terms of, I think GStreamer's biggest strength is its ability to 
you know, isolate complexity to break things down into, you know, to simple pieces that, um, you know, don't do that much and are kind of isolated from the, the global complexity. So, yeah, let's see, what else? This is for the new work in progress schema. So we're making a change in the schema. The original schema didn't allow for um, relative positioning, which is extremely important. And is also kind of the last thing we had to tie up nicely in terms of uh, re relating local time to global time. So after that, and I, and I think we have that, that schema design done now, but the, the live code doesn't use it yet. Um, yeah, so look through that. There's a unit test for that, comparably, or, you know, <laughs> there's equivalent unit test for that test. See, so there's test renderer. And uh, views. So this is similar to the dmedia views.py function. Um, so this defines the, the CatchDB views. The views that NovaCut uses are fairly simple at this point. Um, and they'll probably remain fairly simple just because NovaCut doesn't have to do anything as complicated in terms of the CatchDB views. Um, yeah, it's not a whole lot there. And then one last thing to look at is this misc module, which just has one function so far, but um, it's an important one that you'll probably end up using a lot in, in unit test writing, especially. So say you had a, a video with a thousand frames. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and show you this from the command line. So from novacut.misc import random slice. And then if we call random slice 1000, um, you get a random slice from inside of that. You'll get a different random one each time. Um, so we use this a lot in unit tests, and we're also going to use this in our integration tests. So one of the things we're working on is um, some tools make it very easy to generate a random edit from some set of files, and then we can you know, render that and verify that we're getting the output that we expect. So that's very handy. Um, they'll also show you what the schema functions look like. So from Novacut, um, import oops, schema. So if I create a, um, an in empty video sequence, which is valid, you'll see you get something like that. Um, you get random IDs each time. Um, yeah, so that's hopefully a, a decent tour of the core UI code. Um, or, sorry, the core Python code. And then if you're interested in the UI code, which is all JavaScript, and it's in this UI directory, there's another tutorial um, already on my YouTube channel that you can watch and see that. So, yeah. and. If you uh, run into any problems with any of this and have questions, just hop on to the Hashnovica IRC channel on Freenode and ping myself, J.D. Rose, or anyone else there and um, ask questions and we'll be happy to help you. All right, thanks for watching.